I'm telling you, it's Kaiser Soldier! So, you're really, really a 90s uh, fan. Ready or not, here comes Mom. Okay, Judge Ito, here's some more stuff for you. Oh my, this is delicious. It's I Love the 90s Part of You. This is 1995. Again. Snoochie Boochies. The flicks. The fashions. The trends. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. The two. This is how we do it. The TVs. It doesn't fit. We must quit. A totally money year that gave us even more burning questions. Can being an expert in crappy movies help you play that Kevin Bacon game? It would be so much easier if I could name one Kevin Bacon film. Tim. Revolutionary fiber, or just another kind of wacky tobacco. We could save the world with him. And who better to solve your problems than the lovely Dion Warwick? Was she the psychic, or she just had psychic homes? The answers to those questions, plus the fashion cafe, where eating and eating disorders come together. This is a place that people from all over the world can come and see what we do, which is important. Like what? And the one that got away in L.A. Marsha, 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 you let a killer go free. Because you still love the night. Mm. Because you still break out that baby doll dress for kinky role playing. Admit it. This is 1995, part two. Who didn't know that? Wake up, people. 95, all right. Break it down. Part two. I'm telling you, it's Kaiser Soze! Kaiser Soze! The point, really, with The Usual Suspects is not about the plot. It's about just trying to understand what the hell's going on and who's who and who's Kaiser Soze. Who's Kaiser Soze? Oh, it's that guy who used to talk about Soze in New York. There is no Kaiser Soze! Chaz Terry is this detective trying to find who's Kaiser Soze. Kevin Spacey is, is retarded. He plays a retarded guy. The great actors of the day were around. You know, Kevin Spacey and uh, Stephen Baldwin. Is he a mongoloid, technically? Yeah. How do you guys finger my ass tonight? Is it Friday already? Benicio Del Toro was so hot in that movie. Even though you can't even really understand what he's saying, somehow he's still hot. So when I got his hell stone up, rock. What did you say? So that was crazy. I just remember thinking, it's funny, but we can't understand you. I mean, it starts with the name. The name's almost unpronounceable. Benicio del Toro. Very hard to say. So he just took that a step further. I'm part of the job, man. I'll be part of the job. I want to be part of the job. The whole lineup scene was so funny. Hand, Hand me, me the, the keys, keys you mother suck. Hand me the keys, you mother Hand me the keys, In English, please. Excuse me. Hand me the keys, you at first, I thought Kaiser Soze was the big Turkish guy, but they showed me he was. And then at the end, I thought that he was Gabriel Byrne because they were showing me that it was Gabriel Byrne. Keaton was Kaiser Sosa. Turns out Spacey is Kaiser Sosa. I didn't know. The cripple, did you see him? Always look for the one for which you are not looking. Kevin Spacey is a pimp! Who's a gimp? Palsy, palsy, palsy through the whole movie, and then I'm leaving the building, and suddenly I don't have palsy. Suddenly I'm Kaiser Sosa. Sons palsy. Boom. You started pimp strutting, got picked up in the Jaguar. You were like, I'm going to be Kaiser Sosa when I grow up. They tricked me on that. That was an unusual suspect. Very unusual. And like that, he's gone. Oh, snap. Hello. Thank you for joining us this evening to celebrate the success of Fashion Cafe. What a great idea. I'm really happy. <laughs> Fashion Cafe is based on the idea that models are where you want to be. We're here. We are so excited. I guess that would be in the bathroom, bent over the toilet, getting rid of what they just ate. All of a sudden, you had the Harley Davidson Cafe, the Blues Cafe, and then... The fashion cafe open. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. It's very exciting. I was exactly who they were marketing for. So I was like, I gotta go. Gosh, I feel so high fashion here. Are those tater skins? Heady times of 
you know, America being obsessed with supermodels. I guess they could truly do no wrong. Everyone used to say, models and food, they just don't seem to go together. And I'm like, why not? I have no idea what the appeal of this restaurant is. This is a place of people from all over the world can come and see what we do, which is important. Like, what? Interesting menu, though, at the Fashion Cafe. Claudia's New York Strip, that I'd like to see. Is that like her little landing strip? Linda Evangelista's fishy sandwich? That just sounds disgusting. I'll have the pea and a Tic Tac for dessert. Wait, will you split that with me? Okay, a Tic Tac, two forks. You go there thinking I should be eating a stick of celery. Elle's shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> We're doing heroin. Heroin! There's heroin on the menu. I think this restaurant is the chicest restaurant that there is. If Elle McPherson actually worked at Models Cafe, I would be there all the time hitting on her. But by hitting on her, I mean staring at her. That's my hitting on you. Uh, pretty. Yo, L, how's the restaurant going? I have no idea if it's still around. It's done. It closed like a year later, I think. Nobody went. I guess word got out. Maybe I spread the word. I think people just got hungry. And they were sick of Naomi's fish. Closing time. You pick. That's my boy, yo. That was a hot joint. That's my man, Shaq. Shut it. Mr. Bombastic, Mr. Romantic. Mr. Lava Lava. Mmm. Don't put it back in my head. Come on. Mr. Lava Lava. Mmm. So I was very disappointed to hear that he actually had no Jamaican accent whatsoever. That kind of scared the hell out of me, though. You know what I'm saying? He's from Long Island. Oh, my God, he's not reggae at all? Is he called reggae? No. He's not Jamaican at all? <laughs> it's all good. Oh, my God, wait, look. I'm just like a turtle crawling out of my shell. Ooh. God, I want to vomit. You're the only girl who can ring my bell. Oh, those are the lyrics to Boombastic. Boombastic. Boombastic mean he's going to hit that. Like he's going to Boombastic. It's fun to do, if you could really do it. I disapprove. That's it. Is that DK? No, no, it's regular. <laughs> For my money, news radio funniest sitcom of the 90s. Yes, funnier than Seinfeld. Oh my, this is delicious. Yes, funnier than Friends. Funniest sitcom of the 90s. Nice luck. Is that from J. Crew? It was kind of a, almost like an underground show. That's a good white guy show. That's a show I could watch. Nerdy, uptight white people. Uh, about a crew that works at a radio station here in New York. Everyone's a little bit weird and a little eclectic. You no, know, we need around right here is an anti-winding ordinance. So just sip your sniffling little lip and all your skinny on It was a great setting for a show. I liked it the first time when it was WKRP in Cincinnati. Problem? Big fight. Due to? Argument. The issue? Temper. Hers? Mine. Hit her? No. It was one of these ensemble casts where they go, Okay, none of these people is really talented enough to carry a show, but maybe nine of them together, maybe we can slip under the radar for about eight years. Oh, oh damn. Mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Andy Dick, Maura Tierney, Dave Foley, Stephen Root. That's a show for me. Funny stuff, Phil Hartman. Come on. I've been better. Coughed up something that looked like escargot this morning. <laughs> Joe Rogan, who uh, went on to do Fair Factor, I think he was in there too. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, well, thanks, Fonzie. Uh... It never was a huge, huge success, but, you know, um, I think it's probably because it was just too smart. Shake out the silliness. It was unique. It had a point of view, a distinct voice. I miss it very much. Who didn't know that? Wake up, people. I love 95. Coming up, the hard-hitting realism of species. She really made you believe... You gotta help me, please. ...that she was a naked alien. Plus, lonely people turn to, who else? Dion Warwick. I'm sitting by the TV. God, I want to say this, friend. Next, I love 1995, part two. But first, Juliette Lewis, raw on Shaggy. 
Shaggy, he should know over in these parts. Shaggy is with Scooby-Doo, and he wears bell bottoms. It's not a good reggae image, Shaggy. <laughs> Ben Stein's Pimpus Tracks, 1995. Yo, you feeling me? That's right, Ben Stein here to blow the roof off this joint with the Pimpus Tracks of 1995. Play as Anthem by Junior Mafia. One, two, y'all. Uh, uh, uh. I wish by Ski Low. I do sometimes wish I was a baller. I wish I was a little bit Big Pop by the show Stoppa, the rhyme drop and Notorious B.I.G. Rest in peace. Uh, now I got to find a way to get me some more scratch. Pimpin' ain't easy. Uh -huh. Got ya. Where is a good place to find a man? <laughs> Species was the greatest movie of all time. There was a government experiment where they took a little thing of alien DNA and mixed it with human DNA. What they got was one mean bitch. <laughs> Everybody wanted to see it because they thought it was going to be just the gory. <laughs> then when it came out that she was flying naked. <laughs> Whoa. Natasha Henstridge. That girl was a god. Everybody has a, a few uh, out clauses in their marriage. I built in not Natasha Henstridge. The best theatrical introduction ever. Coming out of a giant rubber vagina filled with mucus and just doing a 360 and landing perfectly. It's like, that's the kind of intro I want. She really made you believe. You gotta help me, please. That she was a naked alien. Who says art is dead in Hollywood? I think she's trying to mate. The alien had to be hot, because no one wants to see a movie where E.T. humans. It's a perfect male fantasy. You don't have to buy her a drink. There's no commitment. You know, if you piss her off, she kills you. But I mean, you take the good with the bad. I wouldn't care if she was a bloodthirsty murdering alien because there'd be just that one special quick moment before she turned into a bloodthirsty, vicious alien. Don't go. Please. I want a baby. What? You're not even off of my crotch, and you're already telling me I'm, I'm in, committed here to more stuff. That's not good. That scared me for a while. I ain't bring nobody home for a while after that. I had to get my detective out. That's some killer cooch. Yeah, it is. All that. Hi, I'm Dion Woolwick. And I'm Linda Georgian. And we're here to tell you about how everyone who calls the Psychic Friends Network is a winner. Psychic friends? I love that. Every now and then there's a scam that is uh, so pure that you have to respect it. <laughs> you know? I'm sitting on the TV. God, I want a psychic friend. I called her. She ain't never called me back. She ain't helped me with nothing. Was she the psychic or she just had psychic homies? We have had people like Rip Taylor, Adam West, Wolfman Jack, Phyllis Diller. Dan Warwick would come and say, hi, you know, I'm from the Psychic Friends Network. And they'd give you a, a number that you would call um, to get, you know, psychic advice for a price. It's all about the Benjamins. What? She clearly needed the money. Why else would you get involved with the Psychic Friends Network? I'm like, oh, Dion. Go back to solid gold. You don't have to do this, girlfriend. I think the scariest thing about Psychic Network was uh, Dionne Warwick's nostril. She did look like the host from Tales from the Crib. Hi, and welcome to the Psychic Crap. It was so great that Dionne Warwick had the Psychic Friends Network. Without it, you never would have had Miss Cleo going, Call me now for your free reading. Call me now for your free tarot reading. Miss Cleo wins out every time. Dion Warwick has nothing on Miss Cleo. And he's also the one that had another girlfriend while he was sleeping with you. Yes, he did. Yep, that's him. That's the daddy. I think anyone that's stupid enough to think they can call an 800 number, dial up a psychic that can actually tell them something worthwhile about their own personal life, deserves to lose their money. That's what psychic friends are for. That's what friends are for. And remember, all it takes is, is a, a telephone. telephone. 
and an open mind. I love 95. 95. <laughs> By 1995, it was a Starbucks. I think every 12 feet in certain cities, you can stand on one corner and see four Starbucks. There is actually a Starbucks opening in my ass. And yet they managed to get the same two people working behind the counter of every Starbucks. It was always like the gay Asian guy with the nose ring and his best friend, the sad girl. Everybody's a Starbucks kind of guy. They're the ones who made going to the coffee shop uh, hip. Starbucks is a daytime singles bar. Instead of paying 12 bucks for a cocktail, you pay 450 for a coffee and you try to get somebody's phone number. And yes, I'm a regular. I like the um, venti decaf latte. Mocha mocha half half with the cap cap and cappuccino with the what uh, the frame with the lemon twist on the side. I like to order a small coffee just to see them get this look on their face and go, do you mean a grande? Yeah, when you went into Starbucks, a medium wasn't a medium. A medium was a grande. Grande, isn't that the biggest? No, that's venti. I was standing, like, sweating on the line, and then they come up and they're like, next? And you're like, um, the medium, uh, grand, tall, grande. Latte, latte foam with the extra foam with the half cap, with the dip with the drip and the whatnot. I don't know your secret language, nor do I care. I mean, who cares if the coffee from India or from Compton? Just drink it. And why is it $3? Coffee's so expensive in Starbucks because it can be. I'll pay for it. You'll pay for it. We all pay for it. It's Starbucks. Everybody just became addicted. If you're working in the office in the morning, you have to get your Starbucks fixed. Starbucks? Don't eat it. Got my Red Bull, my friends. Trippin'. Do you have the time? I love Mall Rats. I think it is an exceptionally underrated movie. You're dumping me? Mall Rats is about uh, two guys who kind of get dumped by their respective girlfriends. There is something out there that can help ease our simultaneous double loss. And they go on a quest to get them back. Ritual suicide? No, you idiot. The f***ing mall. Mall Rats. Awesome movie, and it was a resurrection of Shannon Doherty's career. If you think that I'm going to suffer any more of your sh with a smile now that we're broken up, you're in for some serious f***ing disappointment. That was our first departure from 90210. Brenda? I'm a scat man! But I didn't know I had anything to do with the clerks, and I didn't know that it was coming from an angle of, of coolness. There was a movement. It was a Jay and Silent Bob movement. Snoochie boochies. Snoochie boochie noochies. It's also the origination of the famous stink palm. Take your hand, you stick it in your ass like this. <sighs> there, now you shake hands with the guy. I actually did that to you earlier. Think of that when you go to the arcade and you're playing with that joystick, where that joystick has been before. Mm, not good. You know how long it takes for that smell to come off? Scrub all you like, it'll stick around for at least two days. And they got Ben Affleck, who works at the clothing store. You know, I'm Mr. You work at the fashionable mill, don't you? Yeah, so? Ben is trying to get into a bunch of with chicks in the back of a Volkswagen. Can I use that to him someplace? Fairly uncomfortable. More like the back of a Volkswagen. The scene where they actually show the video of him, like, having sex. Who's your favorite new kid? <sighs> He's like telling her to call him um, new kids on the block names. Call me Joey. <laughs> yeah, call me Donnie. Let's talk about a movie that, that's written for, you know, 15-year-old boys. It's all about, you know, fast comic book dialogue and just, you know, sticking your hand down your own pants. It's like pretty much juvenile man fantasy. It's fantastic. God, this is one wacky game show. I love 95. Coming up. What's in the box? Think twice before you open that box. <laughs> The great debate about foxy ladies and foxholes. Females have biological problems staying in a ditch for 30 days because they get infections. Holy Man, the most messed up trial of the century. Sorry, every time I think about the OJ verdict, I start getting a nosebleed. Next, I love 1995, part two. But first, Jay of Silent Bob. Guys will go gay for it. Ladies, 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 Jay and Saw Bob are into his house. Now, we ain't gay, but if we were, these are the guys we go gay for. Now, me, I would totally pick... That's a <laughs> Even dressed as a woman, this dude is hot. A lunchbox over here, he would love, love to sleep with. Thanks. More like Apollo 13 inches, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right? You'd love 13 inches right in that c*** all yours, huh? Would you? Would you, would you take it like a man? Would you take it like a man or would you f scream like a little and Those are the guys that we'd go gay for. This is Jay and Saw Bob, and we're out of here. 
Roger. Hello and welcome to Booty Phone. You have selected the slow jams of 1995, also known as the best songs to put on when you're getting all up in that. Rated R. Please select one of the following options. Water runs dry. Boys to men. Press one now. Four. Candy rain. Soul for real. Press two now. Four. Brown sugar. D'Angelo. Press three now. If you know the name of the slow jam you want to put on while you're getting all up in that, then pop in that CD and go to town, you nimble. Once again, thank you for calling Booty Phone. Seven was a great movie. Seven, the seven deadly sins. Brad Pitt looked really hot. Gwyneth Paltrow was in the movie. So friggin' scary. There's a vicious serial killer on the loose, and detectives Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman are trying to track him down. He's a nutbag. Just because of the who's got a library card doesn't make him Yoda. Wicked creative serial killer. That always happens in real life. Who's using the seven deadly sins as a theme for his murders. In real life, it's just like dude kills a bunch of women. It's never like, oh, he's playing off the Zodiac. I guess that actually did happen. There are seven deadly sins. What are the seven deadly sins? Slaw. Uh, pride. Envy. Gluttony. Gluttony. No. One I can no. relate to. Bad breath. Greed. Porn. Voting Republican. Wrath. Flatulence. Rooting for the Red Sox. Love. Baby. Captain! You're looking for me. Kevin Spacey is John Doe. So in the same year he played Kaiser Soze and this sick freak from Seven. It's a good year for Kevin Spacey. The Lord works in mysterious ways. What a sick f that Spacey was, huh? At the end of Seven, now there's a surprise. I think it's one of the best endings. It's so horrific. I'm just delivering a package. It's just this box, and you're just like, no, that's not possible. I wanted to know what was in the box. I was so freaked out. What's in the box? What's in the box? I thought candy was going to be in the box. I knew it was going to be something like grotesque what's in the f box i'm gonna open it <laughs> when his little pretty head you shouldn't have at the end of seven you could say that brad pitt got head had it delivered fedex <laughs> yeah i got a uh, got a woman's head here i need to have that overnighted <laughs> 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 If you kill him, he will win. Oh, the humanity. What a finish. What a finale. Die! Oh, Newt Gingrich has something important to say. Let's listen in. If combat means living in a ditch, females have biological problems staying in a ditch for 30 days because they get infections. Holy Newt Gingrich was a very big persona, and he was a speaker of the House. He decided in 95 that women should not be in the military. Why? Because they're not fit for battle. Ow! I have an infection. I want to find Newt Gingrich complained that uh, women get infections when they're in ditches in the military. But he's actually referring to cooties, which is a very serious condition. I'm hoping he didn't mean any kind of vaginal infection. You know what's going to throw them off? Their menstrual cycle, apparently. Because Newt knows. Newt knows menstrual cycles, boy. Like you got that infection again. Go get medicine or something. Does she make the house smell funny? You know, it's interesting because when I've stayed in a ditch for 30 days, it's not really an infection of the vagina. It's more like a gangrene. It's amazing that Newt Gingrich would say something like that because he actually has a vagina. Smack my bitch up! On the other hand, men are basically little piglets. You can drop them in a ditch and they just roll around in it and they don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, these things are very real. First of all, what kind of old-timey war are we fighting here where we're all in ditches for 30 days? Is mustard gas on its way? 
Is the Red Baron flying overhead? It's like, they're going to think that women are constantly being shot. She got shot again! She no, no, it's not period. What does this guy know about battle? He looked like Bob's big boy gone berserk. He weighs about 300 pounds. He chain smokes. He's got a pill-popping problem. If a woman wants to crawl into a ditch to defend our country, God bless her, because you know what? I ain't doing it! I love 95. Him for paper, him for rope. Use the seeds for oil and soap. Oh, my God, this is the hemp. Why did everybody go crazy for hemp? Everything was made out of hemp suddenly in 95. This is a, an underused resource that the government's got a ban on. They gotta release the ban and use this. We could save the world with him. Probably they relax some law. <laughs> you can't smoke it, <laughs> but you can wear it. I don't know what this Mexican, Northern Californian. Hemp fiber is one of the strongest, most uh, efficient, durable fibers known to man. Look, durable, not ripping. I don't know if it's the fabric of our life. It might be the fabric of our nightlife. I'm not sure what the big thinking was, other than, hey, isn't that cool? We're going to make stuff out of hemp. Hemp underwear. Hemp condoms. Greeting cards. Ralph Lauren made sheets out of hemp. How comfortable was that? They had it all. Everybody wants to know the bottom line. Can you smoke your shirt? Because I got hot. What are you what are we talking about? Are we talking, what are we talking about? The 90s? Let's talk about the 90s. Hippies are like, it's good. It helps things. And you could wear it. We think it's foolish to try to uh, limit uh, people's use of any plant. No, hippie. You just want to smoke it. Just why do you got to lie? On the hemp front line were Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson, and Woody Harrelson. He was a badass for hemp. <laughs> yeah. Woody, he's a big smarty pants. I think Woody's propaganda amounted to, I like to smoke pot, therefore I'd like it to be legal. Doesn't require as much tending to. It does grow like a weed. Seems like he's maybe spent a little too much time among the hemp. The hemp thing was a gateway craze. It only led to people making sandals and t-shirts out of crack. Be careful out there. Cause I'm hot. Cause I'm hot. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. That song's still This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Oh, that's right. Montel Jordan and his funky bunch. When I heard that, I was like, damn, that joint was on fire, kid. Yo, when that song came out. Everybody was bumping that. I walked in the house and my mom was like, this is how we do it. Don't ever do this. The song meant, this is how we part. This is how we get down. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but this is how I do it. I always thought that video was just going to be people having sex, like an instructional thing. You know, just like gangsta style. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Did he have any other songs? <laughs> he was like, this is how we do it, just one song. That's not how we do it. I love 95. Coming up, movie stars who shouldn't be drag queens. She's a lady. Wesley Snipes was one ugly woman. Oh, my God. Ooh, absolutely. Plus, the fashion trend perverts we're waiting for. You want to dress like a little girl. You know, what is that? Are you just appealing to men who want to have sex with little girls? Count me in. And cool your heels, Mr. Movie Ticket Purchaser. Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. You'll be sitting through a one-minute commercial. It's annoying. Next, on I Love 1995, Part 2. But first, Andrea's 90210 Lost Diary. Dear Diary, May 24th, 1995. Ugh, oh, I am finally going off to Yale. Anyway, Dylan married the daughter of his father's murderer. And then she was murdered by her father's hitmen who were actually trying to kill Dylan. Can you say ratings? Also, Ray threw Donna down the stairs and she forgave him. Probably belted out a few bars of hold on. So played out. Oh, I miss them already. 
later. College Radio Cut of 95. Straight out of the OC, Slit here with the College Radio Cut of 1995. It's Seether by Veruca Salt. Either 1995's College Radio Cut on the low end of the dial. Got the... the... When a gay man has way too much fashion sense for one gender, he is a drag queen. Do you believe in love? Wow. Tu Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Did that fit on a marquee anywhere? Well, in 1995, America loved drag queens. We, we didn't really accept gay people, but drag queens were very fun. It's a halfway step. What was the movie about? These three fine-looking holes. Ready or not, here comes Ma. This is gonna be hot, man. Wesley playing a woman with John Hickles. This is gonna be great. It was like a Disney version of, say, Paris is Burning. Where do you go after a ghost? I could be a lady. She's a lady. Whoa, whoa. Patrick Swayze, all dressed up. It was almost a little scary because he seemed to be getting into it a little bit too much. Lovely night. Look at those stars. I'm Wesley Snipes. Who <laughs> should never be in a dress, am I right? Oh my God, that movie was crazy. Wesley Snipes was one ugly woman. Oh my God. Ooh, absolutely. Wesley, you're Fine man, but you want an ugly woman. I will never forget that. How do I look? Like the Miami sound machine just exploded all over you. John Leguizamo playing Chi Chi. Of course he was Chi Chi. Chi Chi was a hilarious character. I'm a Latina Marilyn Monroe. I got more legs than a bucket of chicken. Now John Leguizamo, he looked like a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the mother too, they could have did without. Leguizamo, I would hit that. I would totally hit that. You like? I like him Latin. Look at her running like she's running across the border. Why is it men do like to dress in drag? Give me the duct tape. I've done I've done cross dressing before, but I was I was I looked so fine nobody recognized it was me. You know what I'm saying? Shot to the hand. In 95, you started seeing a lot of those baby doll dresses. It's for the adult woman who wants to look like a child. You wear a baby doll dress, and you would get those sort of biking shorts that were spandex, just in case your skirt blew up. I loved the fact that they were cute, and, but uh, still quite sexy with big boots, and they were, they were fun, easy dresses. I had the best baby doll dress. I loved it. It was square cut neckline and the baby doll dresses had the empire waist which means it came right here and accentuated your boobs as long as you had a, a good rack and great legs the baby doll dress would hang from the rack to the top of the leg so it's like a whole kinder whore look this is like little barrette i have a barrette and I have a baby doll dress, so it kind of doesn't fit. And then Courtney did her own spin on it, which is like lipstick like this, like... And then like... like that. When you're such a perv that you're thinking about girls in little baby outfits, let's just bring the cops in now and just start cuffing people. You want to dress like a little girl? You know, what is that? Are you just appealing to men who want to have sex with little girls? Count me in. I love 95. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. Oh. Movie Phone is actually one of the best things that came out in the 90s. At the time I was in I was in college, it was like this is amazing. You dial 777 film and you can find out movie listings. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. You're unbelievable. What you would do is just call the number, and, you know, it had this guy that had this voice. You have selected Making Out. Rated R. And he knew all the movies. Now, I was wondering, how the hell he know all the movies? Movies. 
It's all we've ever been good at. The funny thing about him doing the voiceover was that his voice never changed no matter what the project was. Dumbo, press two. You know, Silence of the Lambs, press three. Great when it first came out, and then you realize it started to get longer and longer. Like he would start to do like bits. Hello, you'll be sitting through a one minute commercial. It's annoying. And it's just like, oh my God, I just want to find out where the f***ing movie is and at what time and can I get a ticket. Welcome to Movie Phone. If you want to tell me to shut up, press Y. I like it. Hey, I wonder what his face looks like. I think he's probably sexy. He probably looks like a mix between Wesley Snipes and Brad Pitt. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. I'm Russ Leatherman, the Movie Phone Guy. Let's go out to dinner and see a movie. Russ Leatherman, is that his name? Let's that can't be his real name. What a crazy f***ing name, Russ Leatherman. Of course his name is Russ Leatherman. Wait, what if he gets really old? You think anybody will replace him? They won't replace him. He'll be old. He'll be like 90. And who now? And frankly, I got nothing better to do with my time. And if Dick Clark can do it, I can do it. Right? All bad. Six Degrees of Separation from Kevin Bacon was the idea that any one person could be connected to Kevin Bacon. Well, yeah, I mean, you can do, like, six degrees in general of anybody. I'm, like, two degrees away from comedian Rachel Harris, because Rachel Harris was on my show, Reno 911. I'd like to be one degree away from Rachel Harris. It could pretty much be any actor. I think six degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon just had a nice ring to it. It's obviously the rhyme. It could be a franchise. It could be six degrees of Burger Nation. All right, let me figure out my uh, six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon. Let's see. This game would be so much easier if I could name one Kevin Bacon film. Okay, Kevin Bacon was in uh, Footloose with an extra. Wait. Uh, 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 okay, wait. Uh, you work with, uh, no, 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 that won't work. Mm, 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 mm. No, I'm going to try this again because I'm really not getting it. God, it, I know, wait a minute. He was, look at Kevin Bacon was in sleepers with a bunch of actors. I was in the straight-to-video release, The Bogus Witch Project, starring Pauly Shore, who was in Encino Man with Brendan Fraser, who was in some other movie with that guy and that guy was in flatliners with kevin bacon Action is made. and also i <laughs> off kevin bacon once at a bar no kevin damn it how can i not get that i used to be good at, at six degrees of kevin bacon it ain't my fault he hasn't done any movies in a while <laughs> Love 95. Coming up, the saga of the bloody glove and OJ's big fat hand. OJ put on the glove was the same way that a lot of guys put on a condom. You know, with the girls like the girls like, I want you to wear a condom. It's like, okay, oh. Can't. The trial to end all trials. Next, I love 1995. Part two. But first. Then and now, 95. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Bunton. Let's take a look at how the world has changed since I tattooed Baby Spice on my bum. Then Elijah Wood was North. Now he's Frodo, Oscar-winning Hobbit. Then Drew Barrymore flashed a thrill, Dave Letterman. Now Courtney Love flashed a scared, Dave Letterman. Then only 7 million subscribed to internet access. Now, who doesn't have DSL? Want more stuff from back then? Log on to vh1.com and download your favorite ringtones. I did not, could not, and would not have committed this crime. The O.J. Simpson trial was the television event of the millennium. I remember watching every single day of the O.J. trial. I loved that show. An amazing cast starring Lance Ito. It was the best thing on television. Kato Kalen. Everybody got emotionally involved. Johnny Cochran. It was like real, live soap opera. Everybody loves a great drama. 
Everybody loves a courtroom drama. Marsha Clark, Chris Darden, Mark Furman, Ethley Bailey, with a special appearance by Robert Shapiro. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every time I think about the OJ verdict, I start getting a nosebleed. I'll be okay in a minute. My favorite thing is when he was putting on the glove. I think he did that during Sweeps Week. OJ put on the glove was the same way that a lot of guys put on a condom, you know, with the girls. Like, the girl's like, I want you to wear a condom. It's like, okay, oh. Can't. And the glove did not fit. Oh, Elvis! Can't Elvis elves killed my ex-wife. It's clear from the leathery elves. I remember the whole time thinking, he's a good actor. He should have won an Oscar for that one. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Johnny Cochran. Who am I? Was flashy. If I put this new cap on. Sexy and fantastic. I'm still Johnny Cochran with a new cap. Just goes to show you, if you can rhyme, your client won't do time. I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. That was the defining moment of this trial. Marsha Clark has that big mole, so if you're on the jury, you're just looking at that. Marsha, 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 you let a killer go free. The sexual tension between Christopher Darden and Marshall Clark, you were just waiting for her to jump over the podium and make out with him at any moment. I hope that Marsha Clark and Chris Darden did have some great sex, because then no one really gained from their participation in this trial. Dream on, white girl. Dream on, black boy. All right, Mrs. Robertson, would you, uh, do you have the envelope with the sealed break points, please? Finally, the verdict comes in. In four hours, they wrapped it up. That's great. That's good. <laughs> I stood to win a hundred bucks, so I was like, please be innocent. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Brother and sister was partying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one. Yeah. I mean, that's just the true. I, I've never seen anything like that. Go find the killer. Okay. I remember thinking, uh oh. White people are gonna riot. No, I'm white. I'm not gonna riot. I have eight TVs. What do I need to riot for? Black people had finally achieved what white people had. If you're rich enough, you can buy your freedom. The thing that really made it worse was, was him coming out saying that he's gonna be constant search for the real killers. I will not rest until I find the real killer. Apparently the real killers were hanging out on the eighth tee box. It was great. It was great TV. People were really bummed out when it ended. I love 95.